My guest today is Gaines Kurgerson. Gaines, how you doing? Hey, David. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really well. I was down in Tennessee last week uh, at your house talking to you, and you mentioned that you've been uh, speaking a lot about ADHD. You've been speaking at tech conference about this a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I got home. I thought, that's that's a really interesting topic because I know a few people that have ADHD, and uh, I, uh, I started looking at uh, the slide deck from your presentation, and I thought, some of that describes me. I, I think I wanted, almost I anybody could find something in there that they identify with, even if they aren't ADHD exactly. Can, can, let's start with the definition. What is ADHD? Well, what, the term we're used to, ADHD, is really all about a medical diagnosis. So it, it's really all about difficulties people are having in their lives. Uh, in order to be diagnosed, the DSM-5 says you have to have several, I think, five specific areas where you're, uh, where it's negatively affecting your life for at least six months. So it's all focused on the negative. <laughs> uh, right. One of the things I try to get into with my presentation is talking about it less in the black or white, are you diagnosed or not, uh, and less of the what problems is it creating in your life and more what traits and tendencies tend to align with this type of brain or, or, the, or these, the things that we lump together and call ADHD. Hmm. Uh, and then, of course, what impact does that have on your life and how can you leverage it? Yeah. Uh, so I think I, what uh, this is a, an attitude that I we always struggle with. Whenever we realize we have some um, hindrance or some handicap, whatever, whether it's ADHD or we have a you know uh, missing a limb, for example, or or vision impairment, whatever, um, we can either use that as an excuse uh, to not do as well, or we can recognize it and say, what are the ways to do better? To get to that, we can uh, focus to compensate. To just be aware of that and overcome that. Yeah. Or even see how the same thing can be a negative or a positive, depending on the situation, and maybe making choices to put yourselves in those situations where it's a benefit and a positive. Oh, let's talk about that. Well, we're not done with the definition, right, actually. What, yeah, we haven't really gotten into the details. Things. We'll start with that. <laughs> so, so for anybody who doesn't know the basics, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Okay. Uh, we used to call it ADD if you didn't have hyperactivity, but that's kind of gone by the wayside. Now everybody just refers to it as ADHD, but generally it can either present as hyperactivity, attention deficit, or a mixture of both. So that's the general idea. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I, you uh, apparently have been diagnosed with this. Is that right? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I guess I did. <laughs> when I was li little, I was diagnosed as borderline. Like the, they okay. basically said, he doesn't really need to be medicated. So my, my parents didn't. And it was never really something that we ever taught or talked or thought about moving forward. But as an adult, I reflected and went, you know, these really are, this is impacting my life there. I see the trends. Uh, and then I saw a doctor and, and I got uh, diagnosed and I got med medication prescribed that I mm -hmm. sometimes take to help with it. Uh, so, but I don't think of myself as having been diagnosed because I didn't live my life that way. It's really mm -hmm. more of a recent development for me. Okay. All right. Uh, and how, do, um, well, we'll talk about what's the, um, how do people know if they have ADHD if they need to address this? Well, there's a quiz on ADH, ADD.org, uh, mm -hmm. but go there definitely right you would want to talk to a physician. That quiz is really just to let you know, yes, maybe you should talk to somebody. Uh, it really does take a physician because a lot of the things, the traits and, and attributes we talk about could be symptoms of other things as well. And especially if it's changed later in life, like just in the last six months, you've noticed these things have started, it could be a sign of other conditions that could be serious, and that's where a physician comes in. Oh, okay. I, I think you really got to start with what kind of traits or behaviors tend to go along with AD. I mean, obviously, we think of attention deficit, so easily distractible, but we, nobody really talks about the fact that it can also come with uh, extreme hyper-focus, right? Being able to to invest yourself so fully in something that you do block out everything else, and sometimes that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways that we manifest tendencies that we might not connect the dots to the original cause. Like maybe we procrastinate a lot and there can be lots of reasons for procrastinating, an abnormal trait for somebody to have. Right. But if the reason you're procrastinating is because you're constantly distracted or you know, there, there, there's ties into the, the way your brain works as opposed to 
uh, other like environmental aspects or or choices, then that that's where you you can figure out what the triggers are or what the the causes are, then to address those better rather than just trying to put a band aid on the problem that it results in. Okay, so that's probably part of the quiz that uh, that's on add.org and part of what a doctor would talk about. You know, how are you are you procrastinating? What situations are you procrastinating? Things like that. Yeah. What else? Uh, there's some really interesting ones, uh, like object permanence, you know, where, where a kid doesn't know that something exists when it's out of their sight. Um, mm -hmm. They found that that people with ADHD sometimes have a, a form of that where when an object isn't out of your sight, it's really completely out of mind. And the same could be true for people, too, which can be a benefit. Like, let, let's say you lose a loved one. Mm -hmm. It could actually be less difficult for you because uh, of the way you, your brain just doesn't normally focus on people and things that are outside of your immediate sphere. Hmm. Um, so it, it really depends on the situation with that. Um, yeah, it's just an issue if, uh, if you have something to do, <laughs> then you need to have post-it notes around to remind yourself to keep They also no, notice the trend of fearlessness where a lot of entrepreneurs, for instance, who take on these massive challenges that most people would look at and feel daunted, like I couldn't possibly do that or I, I wouldn't know where to get started. Mm -hmm. They do find that a lot of the people who are successful have these ADHD traits, and one of them is being able to jump into a new endeavor without having those reservations. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I described this earlier as a handicap. In that case, it's certainly not. Yeah, of course, fearlessness in the face of actual danger. Oh, <laughs> you know, that, that good all point. That's, a, that's an evolutionary <laughs> trait to, the, <laughs> to our species. Uh, all right. Any, any other ones before we talk about coping mechanisms? Uh, th well, there are certain aspects like creativity, for instance, where part of the reason why you get distracted so easily could be because your brain is subconsciously noting all lots of things around you. Right. And those things can grab your attention more easily than somebody who isn't noticing them. But that can also mean that you're taking in more context and more information to make intuitive decisions, which in, intuition is really just subconscious solutions that you didn't think through it consciously, that, that pathway, but you, you have this feeling that this might be a good avenue to pursue, and your brain in the background is putting things together and, and, and connecting dots to, to make those assessments. Yeah, so taking in lots of information, it, it it depends on what you do with that information as to whether it's a good thing or not. If you're yeah. assimilating it and making decisions based on it, even subconsciously, that's that's great. If it's being used to distract you from the task at hand, then that's a problem. Absolutely, and that can manifest itself as like people who like to work late at night, for instance, mm -hmm. and that d d reduces those distractions, that extra information that's coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to work at work at night because there's nobody calling, nobody taking their time. But uh, it could simply be because things are quieter. You know, the right. house is quiet. There's not as much going on. Right. Um, all right. Let's talk a little about uh, coping mechanisms. Uh, let's say that we've I've I've identified that I have ADHD. Um, either both through this this attributes you described. I've seen the doctor. Um, of course, you talked about medication, but that's not the answer to everything. That's just one piece of it. What what can we do as people? What activities can we do to manage this? Well, it, it's going to depend on on what your presentation looks like, obviously. But um, medication can be a good approach for helping you to focus and to block out other things. But I've noticed also, depending on the situation, it could be a hindrance. So I'm very careful about when I take medication because I'm not as good at at um, at, at observing things around me and responding mm. to the environment and task switching, that can be very difficult mm. when I'm on medication. Um, so things like, uh, and most of these are not revolutionary, like keeping lists and calen using calendars and reminders. Uh, a lot of the things that people use on a very limited basis, I find people who have strong ADHD become much more reliant on those and mm. go farther with them than the average person would to where they may actually employ more along the lines of project management techniques without even realizing it to manage their own endeavors and their own personal life, which uh, I found for me lent itself really well to taking a leadership role and helping others through those same skills. Hmm. Well, that's totally me. I'm uh, I'm very much a list maker. If it doesn't get written down, it's probably not going to get done. Uh, and which is why I think maybe I gotta go to the site and take this quiz. <laughs> well, and, and a big part of ADHD is that lack of endorphins, uh, that those happy uh, uh, neurotransmitters that give you that positive feeling. 
uh, that can make it very difficult to focus on tasks that you're not invested in or excited about. Uh, actually, forgot where I was going. With that. So something related to what you just said, but it's looking like. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I, I, what will happen is that I'll somebody will mention something important that I have to do, and while I'm driving or while I'm walking, and uh, I've discovered that uh, uh, that's it's the way my brain works is unless I unless I put it on a list, and I have a lot of lists. I have every morning I have a things to do today, and I have a longer list of things to do this week and this month. Uh, if it doesn't get on that list, it's probably going to be forgotten. It's unless somebody else reminds me again, which is a pain in the neck. Which is, oh, and I remember what I was what I was trying to recall was uh, with list making, uh, you get that endorphin rush when you check things off, right? There's a uh, that's part positive of well. feeling when you Absolutely. complete things, uh, so it can give you that extra push to help build that habit loop of the reward at the end of the habit. Yeah, in fact, I may or may not have written down things after I finished them just to get that rush of checking them off. <laughs> yep. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, I think the biggest thing, once you have the awareness of the the factors that are at play in your life, the tendencies you have, the areas where you excel at, and the things that you struggle with more, you can start adjusting uh, where you put your time and effort and setting yourself up for success, making decisions ahead of time if you know that making the right decision in the moment might be difficult. This is very similar to things that, say, somebody with uh, al uh, alcoholic tendencies might do, right? You don't go to the bar in the first place because you don't want to put yourself in that right. position. Uh, same thing with, with if I know I'm going to be distracted when I'm doing a certain task, I set myself up to where uh, I won't have to deal with those distractions or it won't be critical. But if I know that uh, I'm going to be in a situation where uh, I need to be observant and reactive to everything, uh, you know, I take that into account and I say don't um, start on a project that I'm going to lose track of time, get get tunnel vision and not realize that I've uh, I've, I've impinged on the other uh, focus. Yeah, um, I'm looking at your slides right now and I noticed that uh, one attribute is perfectionism, which I, I didn't really think of, but this is an attribute of folks with ADHD, right? It can be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, is that, why, why, is, that. <laughs> yeah, why is why is that a problem to be perfectionist? Well, is, uh, is you know, in software development, we we have the phrase of like gold plating everything, right? Um, and we we understand that not everything has to be has to have that gold plating has to be perfect. Uh, and finding what the the right amount of effort to put into something for the right reward is difficult by itself. But then if you have this tendency where everything you do almost compulsively has to be 110 percent. Uh, then you find yourself, at least I find myself, uh, actually limiting the, the things I take on because I don't want to spread myself too thin or set myself up for failure. Uh, and then there are techniques that you can use when you do need to moderate, like breaking things up into micro tasks and figuring out uh, milestones right, ahead of time to say, well, this is the mark, this is the measure that I'll know when this is done to the, to the satisfaction of the needs of this task. Uh, so that if I if I check myself and I'm beyond it, which routine check-in times is another technique, right? Like whether it's a month-long task and you review it every few days, or or you just need to spend an hour on something, and every 10 minutes you check and see where you're at, see if you're making the right progress. Um, all of these things can come into play depending on where your struggle lies. Uh, you and I are both part of the the uh, the tech community, the IT crowd, right? Um, do you think that uh, ADHD is um, more or less common among IT folks than it is among the population at large? I don't know of any reason why it would present more often for people in that field, but I do think the field may attract people with those challenges and tendencies. Uh, I, I think we all certainly know somebody who, when they're programming or, or do, working on the computer, they want to have heavy metal blasting in their headphones. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be just because of preference, but I find more often it's because that helps them uh, focus. It, it drowns out any exterior noises. The heavy metal doesn't have lyrics that you can really follow and sing along with, so it doesn't suck you in. Uh, so whatever whatever uh, solution they find, uh, we just think of it as, well, that's a quirky developer, right? Uh, they, they have to have their Mountain Dew. They, uh, you know, there are certain things they have to do in a certain order. Uh, we might dismiss it more easily than somebody in another field, I think. Hmm. Uh, do you think there are separate issues that um, IT folks have that just the regular, the like normal people, <laughs> uh, the population at large doesn't have. 
issues that IT folks have that others don't. In regards to ADHD, I mean. Um, I think I feel like we're fairly fortunate in our field to have the uh, accepting nature to people's quirks that I was kind of referring yeah. to, yeah. Uh, and and all the tools that we have at our disposal. I mean, there are some great apps if uh, if we we're talking about list making and keeping yourself on task and reminders that you can't get rid of until you you know force yourself to do the thing that you wanted right. to do. Uh, so I feel like we're actually in a better position probably than the general public. Plus, IT is such a collaborative community. You know, it, the, the idea of open source and we we all improve by building on what each other has established that I, I think we're probably more open and willing to discuss these things and find solutions and collaborate on them than people in, say, the, the legal field or, or some other more competitive adversarial type of role. Yeah, something where they hold their secrets more dearly than they do in, say, the open source community, for example. Right. Uh, yeah. I noticed that a lot of things you were talking about, um, they reminded me of autism. Is there a lot of crossover between ADHD and autism? Uh, there does seem to be a fair bit. I don't know as much about autism. I haven't had as much personal experience with it. But uh, some of the symptoms do overlap, and certainly coping mechanisms uh, they they tend to be somewhat universal in helping with certain approaches, but I'd say where it mainly differs is um, somebody who has ADHD. I, I don't think it's not generally about how they respond to things. It's more about how things affect them. Uh, and I my impression is that people on the autism uh, scale tend to have um, things or objects that they focus on very strongly. Uh, and uh, their reactions to stimulus can be more compulsory and more and exa uh, exaggerated. Uh, so different kinds of challenges, I guess, is what I'm getting at uh, about like self-control versus uh, like environmental effects, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. And I, I'm certainly no expert on either of these topics at all, but uh, I, I have some friends that uh, have that are autistic they're on the spectrum and some friends that are on adhd uh that's actually which reminds me i was going to ask you um autism is often referred to as a spectrum because people can be a little bit autistic or they can be a lot is that the same thing true of adhd that's the way i see it in fact i think for all of it i i, I picture a th three-dimensional maybe more dimensions than that oh. landscape of traits and because oh. it's really not like at this end of the line is is autistic and that this end is not, or this end is ADHD and this end's not, because there are so many different traits and behaviors that can be exhibited. And the cause is it's not just one cause, right? They they didn't find like one gene that controls whether you have ADHD or autism. It's a combination of things. So we're just we're complex creatures, we're complex machines. And the way we are built and the way we present that uh, varies to such a degree that um, you know, we, we have to have some absolute, absolute definitions to talk about it, but in reality, each person, you have to figure out where those quirks and differences lie. Okay. Um, so we've been talking about 17 minutes so far. What is there anything we haven't covered that we should? Uh, you know, I think the biggest message in my talk on succeeding with ADHD is trying to look at everything from the perspective of uh, this is a, a tendency or a trait. It's something that exists. It's a it's affecting me somehow. And if I can understand it, I can manipulate when it comes into play and whether it's a benefit or a drawback. Uh, and the more I can do that, the more I can tailor my life and the situations uh, and uh, adjust myself personally to live the life I want to. So if I find that I just really have trouble focusing on mundane tasks, uh, and that's my biggest challenge on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and, and I realize that that I've taken measures to try to overcome that, and those have not seemed to address the root problem, then that may free you up to say, you know, I need to find a, a different type of job or, you know, a different activity to engage in where I'm not constantly fighting myself and my tendencies. Uh, where some other people, they may zone out completely on something that we consider mundane, and uh, they get very uh, flustered and unable to function in a situation where they don't have that consistency. So it's it's about knowing yourself yeah. and then know, being able to act upon that. Yeah, so the, the step one, that self-analysis step is critical. And, yeah, and, uh, and reanalysis because we learn more and, and the things that we thought we knew about ourselves can change in light of new information and insights. Mm. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, please. 
so I, I struggled with taking out the trash, right? That was one of the things that I was doing around the house. And uh, I, I would walk by the trash multiple times a day, and my wife couldn't understand why I wasn't just taking it out. Uh, and then she'd remind me, and I'd say, oh, yeah, I, I didn't even think about it. I completely forgot. And I don't think she, that, like, that to her was just blah, blah, blah excuse. It, <laughs> it wasn't until we had, like, a more meaningful like, conversation about like men. Like, I really want to do this. Like, this is not something I'm trying to avoid. I really want to accomplish this. And I struggle sometimes. And here's the dynamic I'm dealing with where I could walk by that trash can that's full 20 times. And even though it's in my line of vision, I never once have that thought of, hey, this needs to be addressed. And and just having that conversation didn't change the challenge for me. It's still something I worked on and I've gotten better at. But it changed the dynamic between myself and my wife to where she wasn't making these assumptions about, well, he just doesn't care and, right. you know, things like that. It was, she was able to then be an ally and help, help me improve. And we both benefited in the long run. Oh, there's a, there's a big key right there. If you've got somebody in your life that could be an ally for you, then uh, opening up to them and uh, getting them on the same page as you are is, is critical. Especially, yeah, especially if you're, especially if you're especially able if you're, to delegate too. And, and yeah. like trade yeah. off things that one of you isn't as good at as the other. Yeah, and especially when you're locked in together 24-7 during a pandemic, yeah. <laughs> like it's going on now. Uh, where can people go to learn more? Uh, well, ADD.org is definitely a good resource. Uh, uh, you, my slides are available on my blog at kurgison.net, uh, okay. K-E-R-G-O-S-I-E-N.net. I'll put it uh, right down here at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of great YouTube videos, and I don't see a lot of misinformation on this topic. Anybody who's putting information out there, I think, is generally doing it in a very uh, methodical, rational way. Like, there's not a lot of propaganda about this subject that I've seen. Uh, so just getting out there and starting to, to, to watch some videos or whatever format works best for you to learn a little bit more about it, I think that's the best way to start. Okay. Gaines, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, enjoy chatting with you. You stay safe. I have a lot of friends that I normally see at technology conferences, and I have dearly missed hanging out with them and getting to see them and talk with them. Uh, and you know, occasionally we connect over Zoom or some other uh, chat client, but uh, that's what I'm missing the most about this this pandemic and being shut in is is my technology friends and the chats we have. So thanks for reaching out. <laughs>